How's it going everyone? Ben here from Augment Guitars and today we're going to be installing some threaded inserts into the neck heel. We're also going to be finish sanding the body and neck up to 600 grit to get ready for finishing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's talk about threaded inserts. I like using them over traditional wood screws for a few reasons. First, I feel like they make a stronger mechanical contact between the body and the neck, as you can tighten them down a bit more. The screws can also be removed and installed any number of times without the worry of tearing or stripping out the neck heel holes. I purchased this threaded insert kit online through eBay. I'll put the link in the description below. The kit contains 8 steel 832 threaded inserts with 8 1 3 quarter 832 stainless steel screws. I've used this kit on a lot of my builds and they always work great. Nowadays, I purchase these individual components in bulk from McMaster Car to save on money as I use a bunch of them in my builds and for customers' guitars. So let's install them. I am using the 12 inch radius beam as a call for the neck while drilling. This helps ensure that I am square with the drill bit because we don't want to drill these in crooked. I did the first two off camera to warm up for filming. We are using a 1764 drill bit to drill out these holes and this is detailed in the kit's instructions. I also set the drill bit depth to be the final depth of the screw when it's fully torqued down when the neck is attached. That depth is marked by the pencil line. Now that we have the depth set, let's draw out these remaining holes. The drill bit should find the center of the hole, but make sure you line it up as best as you can. You can also gradually step up the drill bit size if the hole and bit diameters are too sizable. and it's as easy as that. Let's go ahead and clean these holes up. I'm using a razor blade to fully remove these large shavings. You can once again thank my dull bits for this. I really need to buy a new set of twist bits. After those are removed, I used a small sanding block and 320 grit sandpaper to flush up the holes. But before we install the inserts, let's chamfer the holes a bit to prevent any tear out or chipping. To do this, I am using this countersink bit that I purchased from McMaster Car. I like to do this by hand as I can better control the depth of the chamfer. It only takes a few passes and we have a nice slight chamfer. That's what we're looking for. To install the inserts, we will be using a 4mm Allen wrench. You can do this by hand or you can make your own threaded insert jig. On my builds I use a jig, but most people won't if you're just doing this to a few guitars that you own. I'll have a video here soon on how to make one and how to use it. To install by hand, ensure the threaded insert is square and not crooked with the hole. Begin threading the insert with the Allen wrench until it is level with the heel or just a bit under. You might get a few chip outs, but you can always sand them flush after they're installed. It also helps to put some wax on the threaded insert outer threads to reduce friction and make them easier to install. So let's repeat the process for the next insert. And it's as easy as that. Let's test fit the screw. We officially have everything completed on the guitar body and neck. So the next step is to prep the components for finishing. The first step is finish sanding. Let's start with the neck. We're going to be starting with 220 grit sandpaper to remove all of the scratches. Once they are removed, we will switch to 320 grit and work our way up to 600 grit. Like before, we will be using an assortment of flat sanding blocks and spindles to aid in sanding the flat surfaces and contours. Be sure to take your time and do not rush this step. Finish sanding is the most important part of a good finish. Let the finish sanding begin! Since we already lightly sanded to 320 in a previous video, I am just lightly going over everything with 220 grit to ensure there are no scratches. After a few minutes, I was able to switch to 320 grit.
One thing that we didn't do in the previous sanding video was round over the sharp edges of the headstock. I like to sand them down using 320 grit sandpaper to lightly round them over. This provides a nice comfortable feel and softens that hard edge. I like doing this with sandpaper rather than a round over bit due to the size of the area that we actually need a round over. It's just easier to sand them down by hand. After finishing up a 320 grit, we need to sand with 400 grit before moving on to the final grit of 600. With these higher grit sandpapers, you really aren't taking off that much wood. The sandpaper is mostly buffing the wood and you should start seeing a nice sheen develop. We have now reached our final sanding grit of 600. If you are wondering why I chose 600 as the final grit, then let me explain why. The oil finish I chose for this build, Odie's oil, soaks into the wood and does not create a film on top of the wood, like some polymerized oil varnishes and finishes. This means that the sheen of the finish is solely dependent on the surface of the wood. In my experience, 600 to 800 grit will produce a perfect satin sheen. If you wanted a higher sheen, you could sand up to around 1500 grit or so. I personally don't like sanding past this as I feel that the wood doesn't absorb as much oil due to the smaller and more closed sanding scratch patterns on the wood. We officially have the neck fully finished sanded to 600 grit. Let's clean it off and get it ready for stain. I'm using a shop vac and a brush attachment to fully remove all the sawdust. I then gave it a good wipe down with naphtha to ensure all oils and dust were removed. I went ahead and repeated the process for the body and everything is ready for the next step, finishing. As you can see, the body and neck have a nice satin sheen to them due to the 600 grit sandpaper we used. And that just about wraps up this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna be staining the body and neck and we're also going to be applying an oil finish to both. This build is getting really close to being done and I can't wait to see how it turns out. If you've liked the video and the series, consider giving this video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's more videos coming. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.